Hi, I'm Pathetic. My name is Justin Sane. We are Anti-Flag, and you're watching Ambi. Peace. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Anti-Flag. Hello. Howdy. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you both doing? Good. It's good to be here. We're here in the record, in the back of the record store. It's pretty awesome. The back of Cops awesome. Records. Yeah. And it's looking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this is normally where they bring people to disappear forever, <laughs> but we decided to take a risk on it. If you look so. into the floor, that you can see where they hide the bodies, so it yeah. happens. Well, I appreciate you taking a chance to speak with yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cops <laughs> Records, where you can come shop and die. Yep. <laughs> it's a good time. We are now on this Make Canada Great Again tour. This is the final night of this tour. So is. how has this whole thing been treating you? It's been great. I mean, we're helping to make Canada great again. <laughs> we're, we're spreading. If Donald Trump could do it for the U.S., we could do it for Canada. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we love Canada, and Canada loves us. We are so good with Canadians. Yeah. Canadian, Th yeah. Those are Trump references, if you're not uh, aware. Yeah, it's um, actually... I don't have my laminate on me. You have your laminate with you? I do. Let's, let's share Are we the gonna, laminate oh, okay. with the beautiful people. Of, yes. Um, so you see here, he's got... <laughs> go, go I you can time. see this. It's Donald Trump, and he's got his little hands and his little finger. And uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're spreading the gospel. So it's good to be here. We're having a good time. We're glad to have you. Being that it's a Canadian tour, if you had your fill of Tim Hortons, I'm assuming that's been the case. I have to say. We actually referred to Tim Hortons as Timmy Hoes. Timmy Hoes. Is that a Canadian thing or did we make that up? I have not heard that. Really? Well, really? Again, <laughs> again, we're making Canada great. I, Timmy Hoes, people. Timmy Hoes. I will tell you that um, we've been a band for about 20 some years and um, I wasn't vegan throughout that whole process. And there was a time when I had a box of 24 Timbits in between the seats when we would play in Canada. But now they don't have vegan donuts at Timmy ah. Ho's, so there's yep. no Timbits in my future. And there is great vegan food yes, everywhere. That now. is true. So we've kind of we're kind of off we've, the Timmy Ho's train. <laughs> we've we've <laughs> moved on. Yeah, we're on we've to a moved new train. on. Yeah. When you reflect back on the tour since you're at the end of it, what were some standout moments or some of the coolest shows? For me, the, um, uh, the best thing was um, we were supposed to play Fort McMurray um, on the West Coast, and the town burned down before we got there. So the kids in Edmonton, we played Edmonton, the kids in Edmonton said, hey, let's, since you're not playing Fort McMurray tomorrow night, let's do a benefit show and we'll raise some money for the people of Fort McMurray. So uh, Justin and Two played acoustic. We got some other bands. We did it at a brewery, the Yellow... Um, Yellow Brick. Rel Yellow Brick Brewery. And um, yeah, they donated all the beer and, um, and all the tips and we raised $18,000. Oh, that's amazing. In, a, uh, in an evening playing a couple of shitty acoustic songs. Yeah, and that was with matching <laughs> government funds. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was in total, since then we've been doing other fundraising and we've, we've done over twenty thousand uh, dollars for the Fort McMurray uh, you know, yeah we'd never been effort. there but we were really excited everybody we got a lot of uh, information a lot of people were like yeah we're coming you guys are coming up to Fort McMurray for the first time we're yeah, really excited, excited. <laughs> yeah. and then we're like all right we're ready to go and then the fire and then to came keep us through. from coming they burned the yeah. town down <laughs> you know if they didn't yeah. want us to come yeah. they could have just told us yeah. <laughs> we could have just said so yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> It, it uh, the show though, the benefit show was amazing because there were people who came down from Fort McMurray because they have nowhere to go, you know. They, and um, just to see a community pull together, I think that um, punk rock is amazing in that way, and that when people see others in distress, they're looking for a solution and a way to help people. And you know, it was really just these were all the things that, for me personally, drew me into punk rock. The fact that it's a community of people that care about things other than just themselves. And um, so to be a part of that was great. And there were people there, like we were saying from Fort McMurray, who we were saying, wow, you know, it's nice to see that somebody cares and that people are making an effort. The community. Yeah, and it's giving us a place to go. And it, even just for a night, for people to have somewhere to go and forget about yeah. their their troubles. and Forget it, that their house burned down. Yeah. A lot of kids were like, hey, do you have a house? They're like, no, it burned down. And they showed us pictures of their ha where their house was and their house on fire, and it was pretty messed up. So, yeah, yeah that was a pretty uh, yeah, so that an was, amazing experience. Yeah, it was a, a really inspiring. So that was definitely a one, one thing that happened in this tour that was really cool. Yeah, well, it's also the coolness is going to carry on because in June you're having Anti-Fest in 
Paris. Hell yes. Oh, Hell yeah. Yes. I mean, you started this whole thing back in 2012. What initially made you want to think like, okay, we're going to actually go ahead and make a festival? Because so many bands, I feel, want to, but they just don't. Well, I think it really just came down to the fact that we've done almost everything that we wanted to do as a band, <laughs> you know? Uh, on my list, uh, Saturday Night Live is one thing that we have not done that I would like to do. And the other was have a festival. And, um, you know, we thought that it could be um, something where we could draw on all the kind of um, arms of the punk rock community, the activist community, music, um, the idea that, you know, when the we do... The bands that we love. The bands that we love, exactly. And, and uh, so when we do the festival, you know, we have Amnesty International there or PETA or, you know... Sea very, Shepherd. Sea Shepherd, various organizations who uh, the band has been close to and... Um, and then, yeah, like Pat said, it, uh, I have bands there that we love, and it's just a big celebration of, of what the band's about. I just on the music front, I want to kind of hop on to American Spring, which was released a year ago. It was released back in May. And a big part of that album was kind of telling people to never give up and just to encourage them to do what they want to do, kind of like what you were just saying, how you've done a lot of what you've wanted <laughs> right to do. On, yeah. uh, how is that such a big lyrical part of the band? Like, why do you feel it's so important to stress that on to all of your listeners? Um... Because we believe that things can be different than the way they are right now, and uh, and that is always uh, it's that's what we as a band strive for is that everything looks really crap right now, but it can be different. It doesn't always have to be. It's not always going to be better, but it's going to be different. And and to believe that no matter how bad it is right now, it's going to be different at some point is uh, something that helps motiva motivate us and move us forward. Yeah, and for it to be different, you have to try, right? Like, if you never did this blog, then you wouldn't be doing what you're doing today, yeah. right? And, and it's it's taking that first step forward, and sometimes, you know, you feel like the odds are insurmountable, but if you never try, nothing ever changes. And so that's, to me, I think one of the biggest reasons to encourage people to try something, because we have had the experience where up against insurmountable odds at different times in our lives, we've said, fuck it, we're gonna go for it anyway. And and it took us to places that we could have never imagined. I so, love that attitude so much. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really do. That's, awesome. that's, that's how I had to look, you know, if I didn't yeah, do that, yeah. I, I wouldn't be sitting here yeah. today and, you know, right. yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, there there is always there is always room for somebody who does something that they shouldn't be doing to make something better. Yeah, and if your teachers or your parents tell you not to do it, tell them to fuck off. There you go. <laughs> Leap that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm leaving that okay. in. That's good. Some good stuff. Well, to me, you guys are just one of those legendary punk groups, and I feel like this album, this new record, is just such a great punk album. So when you think about punk as a genre, I feel like there's so many different subcategories of it mm -hmm. now. What defines punk to you? Uh, for me, it's the attitude of... Uh, it doesn't matter what you tell me I should be. I'm going to create music in my own image and do it in the way that I want to. So that it doesn't matter whether that's um, uh, klezmer music or whether that's hip hop or whether that's punk rock. That is the way uh, I see music that is interesting, and that's the punk rock for me. I'll, I'll, I'll stand by that. And when you aren't focusing on that aspect of your lives, what do you like doing when you have downtime? I have goldfish. You have goldfish? Yes. Do they have names? Yes, they do. What are their names? Shamu. Um, uh, the I, Terrible I Towel. I didn't know this, yeah. and this is embarrassing, <laughs> but, but I also it's love true. it. It's um, true. I have... Um, uh, Shamu, the Terrible Towel. The Terrible Towel, by the way, is the, the local uh, football yeah. team in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have a, a towel that people wave at at their games that it's called the terrible towel. And the and it is black and gold. And this fish, when it was a young fish, it was black and gold. It's no longer black and gold now. And uh, the I, neighbors I named like one. To say, uh, well, go ahead. I'm yellow. Sorry. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Black, black and yellow. Black, black and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, shout out to our boy Wiz. Uh, he's yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's the man. And the neighbor kids named one also Prince from Caspian. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Prince Cosby. Prince Cosby. <laughs> Which I don't know what that is, but the kids named it that, so that's what it's named. Yeah. I like that. I think I murdered a unicorn once called Prince Cosby. <laughs> drank, you drank, blood. drank its blood, yeah. you know. Yeah. How about yourself, the downtime? Do you, do you also have pets? Uh, yeah, I have a dog and uh, named after the great Joe Strummer. Not... Not Prince Cosby or the Terrible <laughs> Towel. <laughs> you say uh, my names are not good. <laughs> you know, you and uh, yeah, you know, I think um, 
really interested in issues that surround sustainability and uh, you know giving the planet a chance to survive um, things like for example just like uh, urban garden gardening and, and and you know right now there's a big drive for people to plant wildflowers and plant them everywhere plant them in your city plant them in your yard wherever you live because um, the bee population right now is struggling with pesticides and it's killing off the bee population and we need the bee population to pollinate everything and so if you like to eat food you you should care about bees and um, so it, it, basically like I, I am very interested in, in things like that in gardening and you know in, in issues related to the environment Thank you for sharing the other side of your lives with our viewers. I do appreciate it. For sure. <laughs> and just to wrap everything up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who are going to be viewing the interview? Uh, Don't name your goldfish prince. Guys. <laughs> in my defense, it was the neighborhood kids who named the goldfish prince. When it's sure. now, you always blame it on the neighborhood kids. <laughs> Those damn kids. Yeah. No, just, uh, you know what? Every person can make a, a difference in the world. And... Um, you know, if you're if you're looking for something out there that you can get involved with to, to make a difference in the world, you can check out Amnesty International. Um, they're an organization that fights for people's human rights. They literally save lives. It doesn't take a lot of time and effort, and you can actually make a big difference. Uh, check out being vegetarian, or even better, check out being vegan, because um, the production of food uh, in relation to animals is something that uh, is the most resource intensive, the most damaging to our planet, and it's actually really cruel to animals. So these are things that you can do as an individual, as an individual, if you just are interested in something that you can do to help make the world a better place. Mish, thank you so much for your time today. Thank Hell you. Yes. So nice well doing done. this. A lot of you're fun. an inspiration to us. Yeah, thank you, you for doing you. this. <laughs> Absolutely. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. We'll see you next time. Peace.